So the fourth uh, session on this uh, contextual variables then uh, focuses on the semi non parametric uh, approach. And uh, this is slightly more technical, but also I think it is uh, in several issues that are also of, of uh, practical relevance. So as a starting model, uh, starting point, we consider this uh, uh, a banker and not a Russian formulation of the of the model underlying the two-stage uh, DEA. And uh, I have here used the term semi-non-parametric model. So this is maybe first to elaborate a little bit. Why do I call it semi-non-parametric and not just, for example, semi-parametric? So the difference between the, first of all, parametric methods and non-parametric methods is that uh, uh, in parametric methods, uh, we have some uh, specific functional form assumptions for the for the um, for the yeah, variables uh, of the of, of this regression function and also for the for the uh, composite error term in the non parametric case we do not make any kind of um, prior distributional assumptions or or any any kind of functional form assumptions for the regression function and the term semi parametric generally refers to the situation where we where we have some kind of parametric structure that we are interested in, but then there is also some kind of non-parametric part, uh, which is more like a nuisance term that we are not really interested in, but uh, but we include it just to just to control for the for the non-parametric part. And this term semi-non-parametric generally refers to the situation that we are both interested in the in this parameterized part. In this case, this. Uh, impact of the z variables that we have uh, modeled uh, similar to the linear regression model and then we are also interested in this non-parametric uh, frontier production function f of x so both f of x and uh, this uh, impact of z variables is of interest and this is why i refer to it as a semi non-parametric model uh, another point i want to mention that uh, uh, in the econometric literature this kind of uh, model would be referred to as the partial linear model. So it is you can think about it as a, as a linear regression model, which also includes this uh, non-parametric uh, f of x. But uh, th there is also some some theory that uh, that uh, suggests that uh, we can we can actually treat this uh, parametric part, this impact of the z variables, in a very similar way to the uh, usual linear regression. So the fact that we do include this kind of uh, uh, non-parametric component, this f of x also in the model, uh, this non-parametric part doesn't disturb the estimation of the of the linear part. So this linear part can be estimated as if it was just a fully parametric uh, linear regression model. And now in the comparison to this uh, Banker and Natarajan, we of course we want to relax this uh, somewhat uh, uh, weird assumption that uh, the noise term is uh, truncated, so we can allow for any any type of uh, noise, like like usually normally distributed noise. So that's very very non-standard assumption, and uh, and we want to get rid of that. So in my previous lesson, I referred to the work with uh, uh, Andrew Johnson. So we had another paper in uh, Journal of Productivity Analysis. Uh, where we do not compare to the two-stage DEA, but uh, but actually we develop the uh, one-stage estimation in the in the Stone framework. But it's very closely related to the one-stage DEA that we discussed earlier. And perhaps more importantly, here we also establish statistical properties of the estimator, which are particularly important for 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 example testing hypotheses or or drawing confidence intervals. So in practice, of course, it's very, very important to have a way to do these uh, statistical inferences. Uh, and this is something that in this uh, approach of Banker and Natarajan, they just completely ignore. They just look at the uh, statistical consistency. So what happens when the sample size approaches to infinity? So firstly, to clarify, how does this uh, stoned with Z variables uh, differ from one stage DEA? Um, in my mind, they are actually the same. So only difference is very cosmetic. We here just to relax this uh, bound that uh, the composite error term has a maximum value of this uh, capital V superscript M. 
Uh, that's not something that I really like to impose in the first place. So, so we can just get get rid of that kind of constraint for the for the composite error term, and we can allow for for any any kind of uh, deviation as as large as as needed. So that is the stone with z variables, and uh, then to the to the theoretical results. So a couple of points uh, I, I point out here with the with this uh, theorems one and two that uh, that uh, so of course all of the results they they depend on certain uh, certain assumptions. Uh, uh, I do not uh, discuss the assumptions in detail here, but I just refer to the paper if you're interested. But certain assumptions we need to make about the uh, data generating process, which are in my mind relatively natural and uh, much less restrictive than in the Banker and Natarajan, for example. So one thing I want to mention is that we, we also show that uh, this, um, our one-stage estimator is uh, unbiased. So this is also in a finite sample. There is not any, any bias in our, our second-stage parameters. And uh, asymptotically, as the sample size approaches to infinity, then uh, our this uh, this uh, delta coefficients for the z variables uh, they have asymptotically normal distribution with the expected value equal to the uh, underlying delta coefficients and a known variance that uh, depends on the on the variance of the inefficiency term u and variance of the noise term v but also the the uh, z variables so this is kind of usual usual result of the of the linear regression analysis uh, so this just demonstrates that uh, in this uh, uh, convex regression approach or, or one stage uh, uh, one stage uh, stone stoned or one stage dea approach same kind of properties apply as in the usual partial linear regression model in the in the semi non parametric uh, regression in econometrics so this is just a standard approach or standard results in uh, in uh, similar models in, in econometrics. We just confirmed that this is also the case in the, in the convex regression. I also want to say that this asymptotic normality is uh, very important in practice because this allows that us to then um, use the usual kind of uh, uh, regression uh, t-statistics and, uh, and uh, confidence intervals and, and, uh, and so on for the statistical inferences. So I come back to that a little bit later. Another theoretical result that, that, that uh, I do not really go through in detail, but I just, uh, just briefly stated that, that we show that the, the one stage estimator for, the, for these coefficients of z variables, uh, so this uh, parametric part, these z variable coefficients, they are also converged to the true delta coefficients at the standard parametric rate. So the rate of convergence is no different from the usual regression analysis as far as this uh, parametric part is uh, concerned. So this relates to this uh, question of um, uh, curse of dimensionality in the, in the case of non-parametric estimation. So in the stoned approach or convex regression approach, uh, we still have the curse of dimensionality for this uh, uh, production function part, this non-parametric part. So we shouldn't have a large number of variables, but if we, if we choose to model the z variables in the parametric setting using this parametric structure, then there can be several z variables without this kind of uh, curse of dimensionality. So, so therefore, one, one practical case is, for example, that if we, if we have, for example, uh, multiple different outputs, but these outputs are, are very similar or, or, or measure the different qualities of the same thing, then uh, then uh, it would be possible to then have this uh, this kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, volume measure as an output measure, and then these quality differences modeled with the z variables. So this is a, this is one reason why it's a good idea to to uh, alleviate the curse of dimensionality in the non-parametric part by by modeling at least some part of this with the with the z variables and remember these z variables often might be some kind of ratios or percentages or 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 
dummy variables, for example. So this is in that sense a practically very very useful result that uh, there can be several z variables because uh, these delta coefficients converge at the standard parametric rate. Uh, we also show that uh, the estimator is asymptotically efficient. So um, if there's any other consistent uh, asymptotically normally distributed estimator, we can show that uh, this uh, our one stage estimator has uh, lower variance than any other other similar estimator. So in that sense, uh, this is the has the lowest variance that uh, that we can have. So so in that sense, in any any Monte Carlo simulations, we would expect our our estimator to beat any competitor. We have already shown it in, in theory. So we also demonstrated with, with, the, with the Monte Carlo simulation. So this is similar to what I showed earlier for the, for the one stage DEA. Uh, so now we compare two stage DEA with the, with the stoned approach with Z variables. Uh, but we here consider three different sample sizes. So we consider uh, 50 observations, 100 observations and 200 observations. And uh, this uh, correlation raw is similar to what we what we discussed in the case of one stage DEA. So there's five different uh, values for the correlation raw, and we consider performance uh, uh, similar to the to the Banker and Natarajan simulations uh, in terms of root mean squared deviation RMSD. And here we have uh, compared to the Banker and Natarajan in this table three, we have what we call triple signal. Scenario. So we have uh, in increased the absolute value of delta from minus 0 0.2 to minus 0 0.6. So notice that now this uh, z variable has uh, has a bigger impact, and therefore it makes also estimation of this coefficient delta easier when 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 there's like more signal uh, in the in the data generating process. And uh, we also see that uh, we we see that of course this. Uh, uh, one stage uh, stoned approach is superior in every scenario compared to the two stage DEA, and uh, in in both cases uh, we we notice that uh, uh, when the correlation rho is is uh, its absolute value is big either either negative or positive, uh, uh, the best scenario is when the correlation with the inputs is zero. So that's the middle case zero point zero correlation. And in that case, both two-stage DEA and stone perform better. And and uh, but particularly in DEA of two-stage DEA, of course, the performance deteriorates much quicker when when there is like higher higher correlation. And it seems to be that particularly negative correlation between input and uh, Z variable is particularly uh, detrimental. In uh, in the case of uh, stone with Z variable. There is not so sharp difference, and and even even is more in the other direction. And both estimators seem to, of course, benefit when when there is a larger sample size, so the precision improves if we move from fifty observations to hundred or or two hundred observations. Uh, and uh, so even even two stage DEA with uh, two hundred observation works better, especially if there is no correlation between uh, x and z. Then than stoned estimator with a very small sample size, but uh, but obviously the performance improves as as the sample size increases. So there are also also further further simulations. So this is just a glimpse of what what kind of simulations there there are in these these papers. So I come back to this uh, important case of the statistical inferences. So notice that in in this um, Banker and not a Russian type two stage DEA. There is still the problem with the with the like hypothesis testing of these uh, delta coefficients. So the Simar and Wilson critique uh, is still valid for the for the uh, for the for example testing hypothesis. So we cannot really rely on the second stage OLS uh, if we, if we, if we run OLS on this uh, DEA efficiency scores. However, the advantage of this uh, stoned approach is that we do not really go to the Simar and Wilson's type bootstrapping. So this we can do this uh, 
statistical inferences rely on this asymptotic normality result similar to the standard linear regression where it's also usually we rely on the uh, asymptotic normality so at least when the sample size is, is reasonably large we can we can still apply the usual kind of t statistics and p values and confidence intervals of the ordinary least squares procedure and uh, here i have taken from this uh, a book chapter, Quasman and Johnson and Sastamon, and a little uh, part of the text where, where we discuss a very simple trick that we can, we can do this, uh, this uh, statistical inferences. So obviously by solving this uh, math programming formulation, we do not get the standard errors for the, for the deltas, but the simple way is to then run a second stage regression and we can, we can use as the dependent variable um, either the difference between uh, log of y i minus uh, logarithm of the of the fitted value or we can we can uh, have this um, uh, impact of the z variables plus the cnls residual either way it is fine so we can then then regress this kind of uh, um, composite error term plus uh, the impact of z variables on the on the z variables as, as in the ordinary least squares obviously the Convex regression and linear regression are just uh, linear regression is just a restricted special case of the convex regression problem. So by running the second stage regression, we actually get exactly the same delta coefficients that we already know. But the idea with this second stage regression is to is to then also infer the standard errors and t t, t statistics, p values, and confidence intervals. So we don't need to formulate some kind of separate code for that. We can just do the second stage regression. Notice that in contrast to the two stage procedure, of course, we have control for the Z variables already in the first stage. So there is not any kind of problem in, in, uh, in doing this uh, compared to this uh, like, uh, like uh, omitted variable bias or something. So we have already control for the Z variables and we can confirm that the second stage OLS yields exactly the same uh, coefficients delta as we had already in the first stage but really this would be just a way to get this um, practical way to calculate the standard errors and, and the related statistics so just to illustrate um, I have here for this uh, empirical application of the uh, Finnish electricity distribution so this is from this energy economics paper that uh, that I indicated earlier so we can get this uh, for this uh, uh, delta coefficient we can get the parameter estimate uh, and but we can also use this uh, previous trick to uh, calculate the standard errors and t statistics and p values confidence intervals and so on uh, the second stage regression also gives the of course the um, r squared statistics so i have interpreted here as the partial r square so so it indicates that uh, to what extent the z variable uh, explains the the distance to the frontier so to what extent the z variable can capture these uh, uh, deviations from the frontier that otherwise are remain unexplained and in this case this r squared uh, partial r squared statistic is 0 0.3 so it means that about 30 percent of this uh, unexplained variation uh, is here explained by the proportion of underground cabling in the in the actually it is in the middle voltage network So this is in some sense very, very convenient in my mind that although this uh, um, stoned with Z variables or, or convex regression with Z variables might uh, appear maybe first uh, more complicated than, than two-stage DEA because you have to solve a bit more complex uh, optimization problem. But when you want to do this kind of statistical inferences, it's actually very convenient because we do not need to do this kind of bootstrap simulations as, as uh, Simar and Wilson are proposing. So it might prove actually uh, computationally uh, less demanding to do just one one optimization problem rather than simulate thousands of times this uh, this uh, pseudo samples with uh, with uh, with DEA. So that's something that it's it's worth to keep in mind also that uh, when we want to do some statistical testing, then then uh, this kind of one stage uh, approach is is uh, very convenient indeed. And this is also in the practical application has allowed us to do a lot of uh, 
uh, testing for the z variables that which which z variables uh, which possible z variables are statistically significant in this uh, uh, regulation of Finnish electricity distribution firms. So as I mentioned before, we have done a lot of uh, uh, statistical testing of different kinds of uh, um, variables. And if we had to resort to bootstrap simulations in every diff every conceivable model specification, then this would take uh, ages to compute with this kind of uh, simulation approach. So that completes the discussion of the contextual variables. Uh, the next theme concerns the modeling of multiple outputs, and we, we consider both uh, uh, SFA and uh, convex regression approaches. In the, in the DEA, of course, multiple outputs is quite natural and has been always a natural part of the DEA routine.